So now we're going to do problem 5 of the second section of the exam. So problem 5 has two parts A, B, and B has two parts itself. So now, to find A, so to solve for A, find the limit as the limit of x approaches 0 of tangent of x divided by x. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Let's rewrite this. So what I usually do is just go ahead and plug in 0 first to see if it works. If it doesn't work, that means we need to do more work. So tangent of 0 is 0, and we get 0 over 0, which is undefined. Okay, so that means we need to do more work. Alright, so what does more work mean? Let's try to use some identities and to try to simplify this. Okay, so then we know that the limit as x approaches 0 of tangent of x over x can be also expressed as tangent of x is known to be sine of x over cosine of x, and all that divided by x. Okay? So now, this is the same thing as saying sine of x divided by x times cosine of x. Okay? And that's also the same thing as saying sine of x over x times 1 over cosine of x. Now you may ask, why did I put it this way? Well, I put down here to recall that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x divided by x is always 1. Okay? So, the limit of this is equal to the limit of this. So we have x times... Now, in the limit rules, and the properties for limits, if you have a limit of something times something, you just take the limit of this times the limit of this. Okay, but we already know this is 1 according to this rule. So we have 1 times, now, the limit of this is 1 over cosine of 0. Well, we know cosine of 0 is 1, therefore we have 1 times 1, and that's 1. Therefore, the limit as x approaches 0 of tangent of x divided by x is 1. Okay? All right, now let's do part B. So part B, they give us a piecewise function. They say let f of x be this piecewise function, tangent of x, if x is less than or equal to 0, and it's x if, f, if x is greater than 0. Now they want us to compute f of 0. Okay. So to compute f of 0. All right, to compute f of 0, which of these two are we going to use? Well, we have to use this one because this one only allows for 0 to be on. This one does not allow 0 to be there. So we have to use tangent. So that means we have tangent of 0. But what's tangent of 0? That's 1. Okay? Perfect. Alright, so now, let's see what else. Okay, so use limits to show that f of x is continuous at x equals 0. Alright, in order to show this, we need to show that the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x is equal to just f of x. Okay? Sorry. Tangent of 0 is 0. That's sine over cosine. Sine of 0 is 0. Oh, yeah, sorry. So that's 0. All right, so where was I? Okay, so yeah, we need to use limits to show that f of x is continuous. So in order to show it's continuous, the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x has to equal f of x. Well, we already know what f of, of x is at x equals 0, right? Because at x equals 0, right? So at x equals 0. So f of 0 is tan of 0, which is 0. Now, we need to show that this is 0 as well. So we need to recall that the limit as x approaches c from the left of f of x, if this is equal to the limit as x approaches c to the right of f of x, then the limit as x approaches c of f of x exists. So if these two are equal, then th this, Im this implies that this exists, okay? So then we need to go ahead and compute the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of f of x, and we need to see if it's equal to the limit as x approaches 0 from the left. So this is the left, and this is the right of f of x. Okay, so if we approach this from the left, we come here, 
we have to use this one because x values are less than zero, so that means you're approaching from the left. But we know tangent of zero is zero, so this one right here is going to be zero. Now, is it equal to this one? Okay, let's look. f of zero as you approach from the right, that's zero. So zero equals zero. That's true. So since this is true, since they're both equal, then this exists, and if this exists, then it's zero. So zero equals f of zero, but f of zero is zero, so yes. This implies that zero equals zero, and therefore it is continuous. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump to part two. Okay, probably going to have to erase some stuff here. So let's read this out. Use the limit definition f prime of zero equals limit of x as x approaches zero of f of x minus f of zero divided by x minus zero to determine if f of x is differentiable at x of zero. All right. So, and if not, if not right, not differentiable. So let me go ahead. Well, we'll need that. Okay, let me erase part B. So I'll go ahead and erase part B. And we need to do part C now. Okay. And okay, so to determine if f of x is differentiable at x of zero, we have to compute the limit as x approaches zero from the left. And if we approach from the left, we're gonna have tangent of x minus tangent of zero, which is zero, divided by x minus zero. So that's just x, right? Or x minus zero, let's put x minus zero. Okay, so, and this has to equal to the limit, so I'm just writing down here, limit as x approaches zero from the right, and if we use it from the right, we have to use this, so we have x minus uh, f evaluated at zero, that's zero, so that's zero over x minus zero. Okay, so this comes out to be the limit as x approaches zero from the left of tangent of x over x. But we already know that that is going to be, so this is right here, we know it's going to be one. So then this right here has to be equal to one. Okay, so this is equal to one. Now if this is equal to one, we're golden. So what happens here? x minus zero divided by x minus zero? Well, that's one. So that's also equal to one. So, so since they're both equal to one, then it is differentiable at x equals zero. Okay? So that's it. Yep. So let's recap. A, find the limit. In order to find this limit, we need to recall that sine of x over x is one. With that, we can go ahead and use algebra. We get one. Perfect. For B, we need to compute f of zero, which we did. We computed f of zero. We plug it into here. Tangent of zero is zero. Good. Use limits to show that f of x is continuous. Okay, in order to do that, we need to take the limit as x approaches zero of the function, and that has to equal to f of zero. But f of zero is already, see, f of zero is already zero, and the limit is also zero, so zero, zero equals zero, so we're fine. Now, two, using the definition, we need to determine if it's differential at x equals zero. So using this definition, we approach from the left and we approach from the right. They're both equal to one, so since they're both equal to one, it is differentiable at x equals zero. Okay, that's it.